the two best kinds of shad and cook Frank's breakfast cakes in the kitchen. I uh, kind of stumbled on this little recipe. It's one of those little happy accidents. Actually, what happened, we went into Linville Gorge uh, a few months ago, and I had several boxes of this uh, hush puppy mix, of the onion flavored, which is what I like, and we got out in there, and we had a little bacon grease, but we didn't have enough fat to deep prime. And so I said, okay, well, we'll just make them a little looser than we would for hush puppies, and uh, just kind of pour them out in a griddle with a little grease in them and uh, make what I call griddle cakes or pancakes, flapjacks, whatever you want to call them. And we tried it and it was very good. And then I got to thinking, man, it'd be nice if I had a little crab meat or a little scrap or something to sprinkle in there. And that basically is what I'm going to do. We're going to start with the onion flavored hush puppy mix. And from there, you can put whatever you happen to have in the kitchen in it. Now, when we go camping, we use water out of the spring, but I like to use milk. And I'm just going to make up a sort of a loose batter here out of this hush puppy mix, but go beyond the hush puppy stage with it, as I am doing here, like this. And this is good, it's very much like a hush puppy, except you get a little thin, a uh, little warm little cake if you uh, just pour it in like it is. It's got everything you need in it to go ahead uh, and make bread out of it, campfire bread. And sometimes uh, the easiest recipes are the best. You take the most kindly to them when you don't have the chance to do anything more complicated, like baked biscuits or something. If you can just fry a little bit bread in a skillet. But now I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, we dip this out, and I crumbled up some bacon over here uh, a while ago. I fried out some bacon and crumbled it. And I'm just going to put that in there like this and mix it up a little bit. And uh, how about a little cheese? I just happen to have some shredded cheese here. So we'll put a little cheese and we'll make a cheese and bacon griddle cake here like this. Put a little more of the batter in there. And just pour it out into a hot frying pan and let it spread out into a cake and cook it like you would a pancake. Uh, in other words, uh, it, when it starts bubbling through, flip it over, let it brown on one side, and I got a little heat there. Uh, now, there's another variation of that. I just happen to have some really finely diced up country ham. And again, just dip it in. Now at home, you probably just take one or two of these, maybe the bacon and the cheese or something of that sort, and uh, make cakes for everybody out of that, but I'm just showing you the different variations that you can do here. Uh, pour it out in there again after you've mixed it up. And now we've got a bacon and cheese hot cake or pancake and we've got a country ham pancake. And I just happen to have a little shrimp and a little crab meat and I'll make one of those up for you. Just to give you an idea about what you can do here. with all of this stuff. You can make any combination of, of uh, cake that you might want to make, but that's all there is to it. Uh, more than a bread, actually, uh, a meal, uh, the, the main course, if you want to make those of them. And particularly if you've got a little bit of something, a few shrimp left over from supper the night before, or a little crab meat left over from a dinner, or something of that sort, and you decide that um, you want to stretch it and use it rather than throw it out, and that's what you do. Those are not quite ready to flip yet. Now, you can do this with vegetables. You can cut up uh, little pieces of squash real fine or green tomatoes or uh, zucchini or about anything that you might want to do. You can do that with them. And you can make fruit cakes out of them or fruit pancakes, whatever you want to call them. You can use chunk pineapple out of the can. You can chop up little tiny pieces of banana or you can use blueberries. Uh, in which case, though, you should use the plain hush puppy mix, or uh, ready mix, that all you got to do is add the water or the milk to it, uh, but use the plain rather than the onion flavored. Uh, but that's all there is to it. I call those Frank's breakfast cakes, and you can do anything. The, the variety open to you is infinite. I'll be back here in a minute. I'm going to take you for the two most popular kinds of shad, the hickory shad and the white shad. And all of that is coming up after these very important messages. James Wild. 
have had more hits than any two yes. country stars alive today. That's why we proudly present this special album, a tribute to Merle Haggard and George Jones. Featuring Merle Haggard, singing his all-time classic. And I'm proud to be an Okie from Muskogee. Plus the latest hits from this living legend. The best of three life behind us now. The good time's really over for good. Big city turned me loose and set me free. The best of Merle Haggard. Go what a lonely go. Plus the best of the one and only George Jones. I'm still the same old me. The first album Loving with the original the hits from both street. these all-time greats. But I've always got lucky with you. Oh, my baby, won't you shine? And as a special bonus, You'll also get Merle and George singing together in their history-making duets. The best of Merle and the best of George, plus their historic duets, all on one incredible album. Remember, this special album is not available in stores. Stay tuned to order yours now. To order, call toll-free 1-800-338-9999. To save all CODN handling charges and pay only $8.98 for the album, $9.98 for the tape, send check or money order to Merlin George, PO Box F15, Florence, South Carolina, 29501. Remember, to save all additional charges, send check or money order to Merlin George, PO Box F15, Florence, South Carolina. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. to go for them in the spring. What I thought I'd do now is take you to four of my special places that I enjoy going. The two best places I know of, and I think possibly as good as any places in the world for Hickory Shed, are the mouth of Contentney Creek uh, down on the Noose River, and also Pitch Kettle Creek down on the Noose River. Now, for some reason, the Hickory Shed don't seem to run the same way that the white shad do. You almost never catch them side by side. But here we are, we're at the mouth of Contentney Creek. We're fishing with some friends, George and Nancy Sugg from Grifton. 
And in the boat with me is my friend, the outdoor photographer, Joe Albee, and we're catching hickory shad. Now, right above Nancy and George's boat is the mouth of Contentney Creek. And there is one choice tree that you need to get on. There's not much of a crowd here. As soon as the word gets out that the fish are in, the crowds start to come. But the first party there always gets the first tree next to the mouth, and then everybody else has to tie up wherever they can uh, in order, in, in stacking order, to try to fish because these fish run in a sort of a track. Now, you'll catch a few of them out on the fringes, but mainly they'll come up in the current at a certain place that's to their liking when they're on their spawning run in the spring. And this is spring, as you can see. We've got sweaters and jackets on when you go out in the morning. Of course, it warms up into the day. But this is March, and when you go out there on a frosty dawn to find yourself a place to tie up and wait for them to start running, they come in the spawn and they follow a certain track and they won't vary more than a couple of feet on either side the way they turn out of the main river current and go up into the creek to spawn. And they'll go on miles from here. They'll go on up as far as they can go in the creek until they hit a little dam, some sort of little hydroelectric project or something of that sort that'll stop them. But they'll run right on up in there to spawn. It's a super fantastic fighting fish. And I think the Noose River has one of the best populations of hickory shad that I've ever seen. That one really gave me a tussle because I snagged him with one of my lures. We're fishing with double lures, and I'm gonna show you a little later in the program uh, the way we rig for them. But that one hit at one lure, and apparently he got himself caught in the dorsal fin in the other lure as he went by. And he was really putting up a fight. But these are pound and a half fish, and they're explosive. I call them the poor man's tarpon, and especially when we're fishing with this real light tackle, four pound test line, six pound line, very light spinning outfit. And it's really a thrill to get them on a fly rod. But this is the fish that finally convinces us that spring is here, <clears throat> that the sun is finally returning again to the northern hemisphere after having been absent for so long. Now this is a nice fat roe fish. The roe of these fish is delicious. It is of all the shad, all the members of the herring family. Menhaden roe is one of the best roes that you ever ate. A menhaden is so oily that you can make a lamp out of him. You could uh, render him down and make fuel out of him to burn in your stove or something. And not very good at all, but the roe is delicious. And the roe of all these fish is delicious, and we put a lot of pressure on them for that reason. The guys will keep the females for the roe and throw the males back. Uh, that's a hickory shad. Now, there's one other place that's not too far from there, a few miles downstream, but it, it's almost like a peaceful retreat. It, it's almost, if you excuse me, it, it's almost like going to church. It's so quiet and so idyllic to go into this cypress swamp that's known as Pitch Kettle Creek down on the Noose River. And I've got a little piece of film here that I want to show you just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. It's here that if you catch four, five, or six fish, it's great. You, you've had a satisfying uh, experience in nature. And this is the way it looks in the spring before the trees have started to leaf out. Again, this is when the fish first start to run. And again, Joe and I went down there to check them out. And there was one other boat in there, a guy we know named Ed Lewis from Kinston. And we were the only boats there. Now, as soon as the word gets out, and I don't know how the word gets out, you can go back and keep your mouth slammed so shut that you don't even say hello to your dog. And still, somebody will find out that you were down there catching these fish. And you can go back three hours later and you won't find parking place for a boat. I don't know how the word gets around. It's the grapevine, I guess. But the grapevine works in mysterious ways. He's got a double on there, and that is a kick to catch two fish at one time. Again, we're fishing with double lures. Usually a little spoon on one uh, little dropper and a little thing called a shad dart, which is a kind of a bucktail, but it has a special shape, and I'm gonna show it to you a little bit later in the show here, what we use to catch these fish. But they do fight, but I love to go to Pitch Kettle Creek because to me it's so beautiful. 
It's only about two miles long. Actually, in a boat, you can only go up in there about a half mile or maybe three quarters of a mile. It's a very small little creek, but it widens out into a swamp, and there are holes in it that are 10, 12, 15 feet deep. And these fish cruise up the river and turn into the mouth of this creek, and they go into these little deep holes to rest up before they proceed further up into the creek so they can spawn. Black water. And when the water conditions are right and the temperature is right, sometime often as early as the latter part of February, but generally sometime about the middle of the March. It's when you'll find these fish running in Pitch Kettle Creek. Just being here in this creek is an outdoor experience. And catching these fish is an outdoor experience. Because they are feisty little devils and they will chew all over your plugs. That one dropped off and Joe didn't care. We caught 16 that morning. Ed over there, I think he had about 25. He had a nice mess of them. And some nice size ones. That was a pretty good size hickory shad that you saw going to both there. That's probably a two pound fish. And that's a good size hickory. Throw out the lure and just retrieve a steady pull. You don't have to put any action on it. Just bring it back, retrieve it very slow and they'll jump on it. And in the meantime, if you're not fighting one, you can always look up and see the Spanish moss and the big cypress tree. On a lovely spring day that renews your faith in the theory that summertime will soon be here once again. Thank you, Hickory Shad. Uh, there's another fish that's even bigger and even sportier and even more fun, I think, and that's the white shad. And I'm going to take you to two of my favorite white shad fishing places in just a minute after these important messages. This is my partner here at the Southern Sportsman Restaurant, Bobby Carraway. What you eating? Uh, make a shark steak. How about you? Fresh fried eel. Well, you could have had frog legs. Well, you could have had fish imperial. Well, you could have had quail with grits and gravy. And you could have had sweet and sour duck. And you could have had merry old soul. Rabbit supreme. Seafood platter. Stuffed rainbow trout. Ribeye. Fried oysters. Spicy boiled trout. Oyster pie. Fried the menu at the Southern Devil Sportsman Brand. is fried worth fish. arguing Hang about. Shark steak. You already said that. I realize a lot of you folks out there can't buy these fine House Autry Mills products because you've told me so. Your grocer just doesn't stock them. We're sure your store manager wants to serve your needs, so copy this address and give it to him. Tell him you want to buy these House Autry products. Some things like House Autry are worth asking for. House Autry Mills will be happy to serve you and your grocer with the finest products at a fair price. House Autry Mills products, worth asking for. Sneaky Snake, the live-action salt flavor worm, is the hottest bass-busting lure on the market. The folks at Seeker Lure make you this fantastic get acquainted offer. We'll send you an assortment of 60 Sneaky Snakes and 140 tournament-tested worms and 100 Red Hot Crappy Jigs and 40 Frog Trailers and 20 of the newest in lures, the Shining Shad, for the unbelievable low price of $23.95. That's a $60 value for $23.95. Call toll-free or send your check or money order to Sneaky Snake, Post Office Box 710, Mountain Home, North Carolina, 28758. One of our most popular dishes at the Southern Sportsman is the sweet and sour duck, a special recipe. The same goes for our frog legs. We cook them different. And Frank's fried shrimp, marinated in cognac, fried in a beer batter, served with a special sauce. Wow, you could say that about all 25 of our recipes on the Southern Sportsman menu. Our most frequent complaint is that we don't charge enough. Well, we put out the best game in seafood we can at the Southern Sportsman at a fair profit. If you don't think you've paid enough, fine. Give the rest to your favorite charity with our compliments. The time we're getting low on time, so I'm going to get right into the film right now. We're going to go down first to Panopolis down in South Carolina, where in the spring of the year, late March or the 1st of April, somewhere in that neighborhood, the guys sit there, and this is a kind of trolling, although the boat is anchored, but the current is sufficiently strong that you just let your lure out behind. And again, we're using real small spoons and real small bucktails like shad darts, letting them back uh, into the current 
with a, about a four foot leader and a one ounce or two ounce, uh, you, you have to just keep experimenting until you find out the level that the fish are running. But these are big fish. It's common down here to catch a six pound fish. And five pound ones, uh, you see them just going into the boat all the time. But this is a, a marvelous, marvelous fish here. And I'm fishing with some friends of mine, uh, Don Hammond, who's a biologist with the Marine Resources Department down there and Richard Bullwinkle and Rod Newburn, who are from down in the Charleston area. Uh, this is Richard holding up that beautiful shad there. But you just sit there and kind of troll and, and without moving the boat. Uh, you just troll in the current itself, let the lure trail back behind the boat, and you'll notice, now this guy's got a, a weight up there about three feet above. Uh, now you do catch herring, and you do catch an occasional hickory shad here. And it's one of the few places I've seen where you catch a hickory shad alongside of the white shad, but this is below the dam down at Panopolis in South Carolina. And these fish run up there and they can't go any further. They come up the Cooper River from Charleston and the dam stops them, but apparently they have enough running room, river room, or whatever you want to call it to make a nursery because they do spawn and they come back every year and they do get big. They're really nice big fish. Some of the biggest shad I ever caught were caught from this spot. Now, I've got one favorite spot that I want to show you. This I'm going to show you is the Trent River, way up the Trent River. It's late in April or early in May, and it's some of the absolutely finest shad fishing I've ever seen. Now, I'm up in this river so far that it's only about 10 yards wide. It's only about 30 feet wide, and again, you throw out, cross the stream, and just retrieve slow, bring them along, just easy with no particular action or anything like that, no twitching or jerking or anything, just a steady pull and slow, let it sink down till it's just above the bottom and these fish jump all over this thing. And this is white shad and it's a nice one. This is about a four pound fish here. And there's something about catching them in this little river this far, I mean, we're, we're still in the coastal plain but you feel like you're in the Piedmont it's 50 miles by water from here to where the Trent goes into the noose at Newburn. It's about 30 miles by air. It may be more than 50 miles. I don't know how far upstream we are. But these fish have run all the way up to spawn. And to get to the holes in the Trent River up here as far as we are, we're almost to Kinston. If you know where Kinston, North Carolina is, we're almost up to Kinston. We're way above Trenton on the Trent River. and. You have to cross farmland. You have to go across private land to get in to these places. There's several places to get in there to the river, but highway access uh, is sort of limited. There's maybe three bridges that cross this river that you can get into. And the rest of it is uh, uh, just farmland. You just have to go down, get some farmer's permission, and drive down a rutted road uh, across this cropland until you find the creek bank or the river bank where you can put in, but these are some of the biggest white shad that I ever caught, and I've, I go in there every chance I get. As I say, this is from about the middle of April on up until about maybe the first week of May. It doesn't last long, about two or three weeks, and this run is over, but I've been in there a number of times, and only one time have I ever seen anybody else fishing on this entire stretch of the river and we saw somebody sitting on the creek bank with a, with a pole fishing for brim. I've never seen anybody fish for shad up here in this stretch of the Noose River. It's a beautiful little river and it offers beautiful fishing and that's a trophy there. And what you have seen today is what makes the shad one of my favorite fish. Not only does he aroused my enthusiasm early in the spring, but it's a marvelous fish. I will be back here in a minute with a final word after this. I feel comfortable outdoors, especially when I'm wearing my long haul jeans. Not only are long haul jeans practical, they're the most comfortable jeans I've ever worn. Long haul jeans are cut bigger in the seat and the thighs, 
and they're made from stretch denim, so they look good and feel good, even when I stretch, bend, or sit. And that's important, because it looks like I'm going to be sitting here quite a while. Long haul jeans, the most comfortable jeans you'll ever wear. I'm going to show you the little shad dart that I was talking about, the little bucktail type of lure. It comes in a variety of different sizes, but this is what it looks like. It doesn't have uh, what you're probably familiar with is the average bucktail. This one has sort of a little sloped face on it. And sometimes we'll use two of these. As, as I say, they come in different sizes. You might put a larger one on for weight and then use a smaller one if that's what, if that's what the fish seems to be hitting. And sometimes we'll tie two of those on. Uh, but more often we'll use something like this, a spoon, and a little dart, and the spoon normally is on the longer uh, of the two drops. You've got, let me see, yeah, see here is where my hand is up here. Uh, you've got a little loop there you can put a swivel in, snap it in, and the spoon normally is the longer one. I don't know why, but it just seems that they hit the spoon more often than not. It looks like two little fish running along there together, and I guess maybe they think, uh, that one of them is chasing the other. Uh, but that is the rig that we use uh, almost universally when we're fishing for shad. We'll see you here next week. Please do not litter and do yourself a favor. Take a kid fishing. The Southern Sportsman has been brought to you in part by House Autry, proven cornmeal and flour products. The Southern Sportsman Game and Seafood Restaurant, the best food from field and ocean.